Sidney Crosby's in Sunrise, Florida for the start of All-Star festivities, which will really begin in earnest today and then tomorrow with the skills competition. And his two regular wingers won't be anywhere near the place for a reason. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Penguins. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or baseball. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Pirates that I hope you'll check out. Jake Gensel and Brian Rust have deceptively okay numbers. Let's put it that way. Because for Sid to get to the All-Star game, To start off, for him to have 60 points, for him to have 24 goals, 36 assists, and to be producing the way he has, the proper credit always has to go to the players around him. If you look in particular at some of Jake's assists on Sid's goals, they've been absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so it's not as if Sid had to drag his way into the all-star level again. Uh, He is who he is, and he's earned it. However, when you get to a pure production-slash-finishing standpoint, there's some underlying stuff that really could use improvement from both Jake and Rust. And I'm going to give you a, a couple of examples here of stuff that, again, this goes below what you see. If you see that Jake's got 20 goals, At this point of the season, that's just terrific. This is a guy who's been a 40-goal guy to his credit. That's never, ever easy to achieve. And here he's sitting at 20. So if this is a slump and he's at 20, all he has to do is be a little bit better, and he's right back at 40, and we're not talking about anything, right? However, however, out of Jake's 20 goals, five of them, count them, five of them have been empty netters. Now, they've been... Big time clutch empty netters in a couple of cases where his finishing dagger there was enough to seal what might have been an otherwise hairy victory or even another blown lead. But he got five empty netters. Five of them had been power play goals. One of them was a three on three overtime goal. Eight total goals out of his 20 have been at five on five. Eight. That's not. Jake. Jake's actually been one of the better five-on-five performers in the NHL over the past half decade. So he's way down below his own bar. Understand, again, I'm not criticizing. I'm pointing something out. Jake's still a really, really good hockey player, but he can be better because he's been better. Rust is a different case. Rust has 11 goals for the season, which right there on its face is the beginning and the end of that discussion. That's nowhere near where he should be. Rust has the talent. He has the surroundings, obviously, to be a 30-goal guy. He will tell you that himself, and he will be right. The biggest disparity between the previous Rust and the current Rust is kind of a peculiarity. He has a career 12.6 shooting percentage. That's really good, actually. But it's not an outlier for him. If you go back over his last three seasons in particular, he's been up over 12. So it's not like it's some fluky thing that he did one time and dragged the average up. The shooting percentage this year is 8.7. So if your first thought upon hearing, oh, Russ's only got 11 goals, is, yeah, but he seems like he gets a ton of chances. He does. And that's a positive. Every coach at every level of this beautiful game will tell you that if you're getting chances, you're playing well. Next thing you need to do is just bear down and bury the puck. Well, Russ's had a bunch of those. He's had Clean breakaways that get shot over the bar. He's had uh, partial breaks that he hasn't done much with, or he's put it right into the goalie. Or, to be fair to him, you know, sometimes the goalie just beats you. That's happened a lot to him. He's capable, probably even more than Jake, of going off on some kind of ridiculous goal binge that'll convince you he's actually the best player on the roster. 
which I know, I know. But for a while, and I'm talking about three, four weeks, they're not short spells. He'll just go berserk and everything off his blade will end up in the back of the net. Kind of like, to be honest with you, the goal he put in the other night. It's kind of a long range flick, just a wrist shot, unscreened, just whoop, right, right up over the shoulder. And then afterward, he talked about how he just needs to be shooting the puck more and wants to be more focused on that. He's shooting the puck plenty. He just needs to keep doing that, but also do it a little bit better. I'm going to say this once more, if only for dramatic effect. I'm not blaming anything at all related to the first line or, for that matter, the second line for the inconsistencies and the problems that the Penguins have had. To me, as I've been saying almost nonstop for a couple months now, that points almost entirely to the third and fourth lines completely lacking energy, personality, purpose, you name it. But that's not to say that the first line can't get even more productive. I think both of these guys, Jake and Rust, are capable of more in the second half, and I sure wouldn't be surprised if we saw it. When we come back, J1Q. comes from Bernard, who's referencing yesterday's theme about Tristan Jari being hurt a little bit too often for comfort. Bernard says, Jari is injury prone. How can the Penguins cope with his absence if his injury ends up being long term? Casey DeSmith is a backup, is inconsistent. Who can the Penguins rely on? Well, they're going to end up in that event relying on Dustin Tokarski. And, you know, Tokarski's got NHL experience. Um, It's not great. He was a starter in Buffalo for a little while, not so long ago. He's, uh, you want to talk about inconsistent. If you look at the two games in which the Penguins used him just recently, his first game, he came on, he was a house of fire. There were all kinds of shots coming his way. He was super busy. He was super engaged and everything else. The second game, he he was an AHL goaltender. He was splattering himself all over the place, way out of the crease. Uh, just something that wouldn't foster confidence in anyone, most importantly, the people in front of him on the ice. I think if you were to reach the point that Jari would be unavailable in some sort of long-term-ish way. And by the way, I've heard that that's not the case. I've heard that his injury is not something that'll keep him out for some sort of sustained stretch. Now, that said, you know, I thought I knew a lot about his last injury and he came back and had a completely new one. So that really doesn't amount to much of anything. If he's out, whether it's this injury or some other injury, and you have built this roster the way you've built it, if you're Ron Hextall, you just don't have a choice. You've got to go get a goalie. And you can say, well, how? How do you do that? You know, half of your team is, you know, holding on to no trade clauses or limited no trades and everything else. How do you do that? You have no cap space, so you can't just say, well, we're just going to send out a second round draft pick to somebody and get a goalie back because you don't have anywhere to put him cap wise. It's complicated. It really is. You'd have to find some kind of deal where somebody takes money off your hands while at the same time they get something in return like a draft pick and the player that you're sending out isn't someone who's got a no movement or a limited no movement This is why, you know, this is why, and I I can't muster up any sympathy here because this is all self-inflicted wounds, all of it, because you didn't need to sign Carter to a two-year extension. You most certainly didn't need to make sure that the finishing nail in the coffin 
of your salary cap space was two more years of Kasperi Kapanen at $3.2 million each. Each. This is, you can't do this. It's irresponsible. And even if you think to yourself at the end, oh, well, you know, we used every last penny. Look at us. Good for us. It doesn't work. They can't even manage a routine call up from Wilkesbury the way this cap is. And this was before the season. This wasn't some emergency state to which Hextall had to respond. The kind of stuff we're talking about here. It's just a lousy, lousy way to run a professional sports team in a cap league. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Penguins, and we will do another one of these tomorrow. Thank you.